Please welcome Charles Matu. new at this, the, the uh, shy, classically trained poet on a dare from his therapist, why he's sure to blow it, is freaking at his first public reading. He tries to rouse his inner tiger burning bright, but falls to fright. Thus self-consciousness doth make a coward of this twit. Oh. He sees a road not taken, labeled exit. Oh, really uneaten peach rot, pluck he has not. Oh, sweet muse, blow my fuse so I can sing the Charles Electric, turn pedantic academic lackey into pan frantic pandemic Kerouacy. I am a disaster, make me a beat hip hop and spoken word master. The poet, formerly known as Shy, surprises himself, reverts to third person, but his chops are licked with turgid tongue. He feels a fit of language rising. Here it comes. Oh, no, wait. Maybe ease into it via second person, why don't you? Yeah, always the mask, you poser. Dreaming to be a beat poet, hero, daddy-o, that's a how. Your muse is Kerouac on the roadkill. Hip-hop spoken word star. Bro, you got far to go to to turn pro. You're still in school, fool. Your stream of consciousness needs an enema. It's a limp poetic impotence, pretty pretense, devoid of substance to avoid what's revealing and real and authentic, loser. Fair pathetic! And after all these fears as the butterfly atrophied, mummified, died in your cocoon of can't not yet too soon, Come on, bro, blow your lid, unleash the id, you, you know you're led to charm the bardic snake like Shakespeare breakdancing in your head and brain your retread parlor poet refrain and let rage flames of genius bust down the walls and fraud to the divine dominatrix of rhythm and rhyme and ride out onto the open deep. Range, woohoo! Purple haze, mountain majesty, bareback and cosmic creation sensation. The next big bang, bringing that badass poetry thing. Just I, 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 the blutter, butterfly, free verse, me voice, volcanic, I can, I, conic, first person, lyrical king, and I will tower over every poet who lived. Fame, fortune, power, Pulitzer, spoken word, Nobel, rock star. Ride the snake, baby! Wow! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, well um, the uh, shy, deflowered, empowered bit of a mess you could use some furnace. Spoken word poet just found cheaper therapy. <laughs> This is your brain on performance poetry. <laughs> yeah. It's all downhill from here. <clears throat> all right. Without any further ado, that spring thing. Spring, zing, zap, zap, soft, thunderhead, clap, bolt, births from the dead, its wild, cold thread woven through all, me, you, wounds turning wombs of resurgence, phoenix desire blooms up for another round, 
buds bulge over lengthening days, stretching a slow mo ecstatic wave of awesome finesse. Flower power, what delicate drape of dress for this inertia devouring tigress. Blowing blusterly, lusterly spring, you muscle beauty into being like a lover whose excess goes full out into awakening serene. O oh, spring, tis of thee I sing of your wide open yes, a potent I am, we are, we can, that trades in healing resilience and deep free markets of energy exchange. Don't put all your bets on empires collapse into zombie apocalypse locked with darkness because our vernal vivacious virtuosity knows how to Armageddon it on. Rock back the clockwork orange hair scare attack, the latest tip of the iceberg of power's ancient derangement, institutional degra degradation, and our drift into so-called culture war estrangement. But here we still are on this earth, and we can rearrange this world that belongs to all. It seems too big to do, but like a butterfly or flower, like a flower or butterfly wings, spring starts with lots of small. So spring fling, creative compassion bombs away. Let the amor heads explode where they may. Prison heart break out of divisions with the power of imagination. Spring is the magician, Aikido alchemist, to make a masterpiece in progress from this mess. Spring, the great come on of can-do that pushes through the cracks in the sidewalks, leaks truth through the bull talk, busts loose for free like a hobo saint riding holy rails of glory in this folk land of yours and mine. Let's bet on spring's bottomless source that empowers what cynicism and despair thwart, meshes our embodied life with dreams of what can be, shouts it out because no silent spring has yet come, and though we could end up undone by too much sun, glum, or gun, virus, animus, or homo ignoramus, let's place our trust in spring's run and life lust sublime. We are fertile stardust and we are made to shine. Okay. Midlife. <clears throat> Midlife, chronological presumption of a tidy sum of years to come, trying to measure up to time. Cronus eats his young. Old dreams must shed their skin or be flayed alive. Panic or pause for recalibration. Midlife is trophy days, grimy with abandonment, or worn with too much polishing. It's photos of lovers that beg the question, how could all those feelings die that I thought I would die for? The past taunts and beckons, my heart in a vice of stagnant blood, I'd like to torch this nest made of nostalgia and remorse, rise on wings washed clean again by red ash and light. Midlife is a high wire walk in the park between flaming out and rust. Midlife is falling on your ass and everyone is laughing and they're all you. My midlife at least needs to lighten the heck up and learn to laugh more. This fall climbs a steepening slope with a basket case heavy with experience. There's a slight chill to this season that urges ferment yourself into spirits and gather your will. Now the water is up to my midriff. The sea wants in, the water of life wants under my skin to kiss its holy kin. In midlife, in darkest midlife's marrow, a menagerie of abandoned beasts plead to the keeper, the sleeper, let us out, let us swim in your blood gone tame, and we will sing you your forgotten name. I miss the rush when everything shimmered in the new, Energy, desire, dreams seem boundless, and the world my orchard, full of ripe fruit of first times, waiting to fall like feather lightning into my open hand, heart, lap. I leaned into that fat time, now I must waste nothing, find the patient point of balance, saving grace. Maybe I can cut another cord, be midwife to mystery, to the passion of non-possession, the indulgence of letting go. 
releasing desire for old desires, for what never fully came or stayed, never quite fulfilled its promise, could not reveal its shy morning glory in the tempest of so much wanting. Now, alongside wanting's child, regret for done or not done. I'll let that usurper fly the nest. Let love beget loves to flock my chest. Allow a wider sphere to relish this feeling body, even as it fades. This shore cut between spirit and flesh, the night undressing stars, winter's clarity, dawn's west winds to breathe smoldering bonfires awake, because my heart, like everyone's, is potent with poems, and life is always beginning, peaking, now, and there's no time else to choose, and nothing left to lose or win, only life to be fully lived again. Okay, and now for something completely different. This was uh, inspired by reading some of Robert Bly's, uh, I think it's called Guzzle, uh, Middle Eastern form, uh, kind of interconnected uh, couplets or triplets that kind of move in a kind of meaning progression. And I thought, well, maybe I could try that with some haikus. So I came up with this haiku sequence. Clouds bleed from blue, blues fall from desire's seed, like you reign over my world. Three poplars gently rock, sheltering sky, a soul cloud sweeps a blessing. A drunkard roughly lullabies silent sky, blue cop smiles and passes. Lone face, leather, bone, Flat on his back, breath moth soft, last flight, harvest boon. Newborn thrusts out from Eden, hard ocean crossing, old depth in each tear. Tiger eyes surface, wake white lotus, waves cross, peace stalks a fiery gaze. Judgment sours these lines. I invite my rascal friend in to toast our folly. Do I bum Zen sense? Basho, poser, no matter. Moonlight shines, silence. Okay, this next one. Uh, I was inspired by this uh, amazing book I read, Deanne Stillman's Mustang, The Saga of the Wild Horse in the American West. Uh, and just as a note, the, the herd roaming of Mustangs roaming the wild sands was removed in the late 1990s. White sands, excuse me. Mutant Mustang. <clears throat> 1945, on the White Sands, New Mexico, New World Test Range, a holdout band of Mustangs witnessed a new dawn and its twin. Old gods with dark eyes watched the upstart destroyer of worlds mushroom into light. Rolling thunder under open cobalt blue, rending atoms for the dogs of war. Crude toy compared to the power of consciousness that created it, us, everything. Dreaming megatons of imagination spawning poetry at ground zero of our souls. A new foal dropped on an oasis of cool grass, licked by mother tongue, heart already galloping. Strange new light in its eyes running forever on the shock wave of the irresistibly blown open moment. New frontier. Christmas 1998, the Nevada Badlands, so-called when you're maladapted to them. Three rogue men shoot their pain from deadened chambers into 34 wild horses. Put out the eyes of one with a fire extinguisher, but you can't douse that fire ignited before we began. Close that immense mirror eye once you've seen it. Crucify consciousness. 
but we can rein in the truth pain so tight we explode or hate what runs free and numb to what has birthed us create an economy that drives humans to extinguish so much beauty, construct ugly, fetishize, violence, fear, death, which otherwise could be our dark mirror reminder of where freedom and unity meet. Navajos on an old movie set use amulets to protect themselves from the gaze of one Rex the Wonder Horse. They were not blind. A turbocharged Mustang, muscle car marketing concept, crude toy to its namesake, conquers distance on paved over wilderness, packs all those horses under the hood, packing heat, pass, passes a truck packing wide open eyes cross border to the slaughter to rend horse flesh for the dogs of domesticity. Four on the killing floor, four hooves galloping intimate earth, four chambers of pounding heart, four times four horses that came with Cortez, weapon of shock and awe, god of thunder and lightning, old world stampeded to dust in the lust for gold. Sixteen horses exploded into millions, rivers of horses rumbling to the horizon that took an hour to pass, rolling thunder like the beginning or end of a world, going nowhere but forward into life, spurred by mysterious desire. Do we yearn to free the swelling grief for what we have lost, weep a cleansing river so we can truly praise this awesome world? We have run together from the first gaze shared between two, two proud species, and we have taken so much from this catalyst for human history, replaced by cars, battle tanks, and drones, the wild ones displaced by domesticity grazing by the millions. A dream we can run free and together, spirited individuals in one invisible stream, not a herd, the modern mass of isolated individuals seduced into giving up their power, led by power to slaughter and slaughtering, alienated from an increasingly artificial world. The vaqueros had words for penned mustangs, sentimiento for a horse that died of heartbreak, despecho if it died of nervous rage, but equine therapy heals human psychic trauma, gentle power, natural compassion. The Sioux called horses wind drinkers and slit their nostrils to turbocharge their inspiration, fly faster along the earth, but they never confined them. It's been uneven symbiosis, but equus is in us, whisperers of what might save us. What we do not bring forth will engineer our destruction. Can we birth the wild imagination in every particle of our beings, the love that changes the equation? Rationality split from wild hearts in the intuition, explosive evolution and technical power, a genie that can't be bottled, an increasingly wild ride that must come from a deep sense of balance, beauty, reciprocity, that is true security. We can cut what restricts deeper inspiration, enlarge the chambers of our hearts. There is urgency, spur each other on, find love in each other's eyes, loosen the reins, nothing to fear. The crucible of our self-caused crisis can dissolve walls, fuse mastery, humility, and the wild card of mystery into the art and power of invention in service to the welfare of beings. Then anything is possible for we are makers of worlds. This is called Smartphone. Hi, I'm your smartphone. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Google it, GoPro, goggle it, ogle it, Pokemon, go for it. Just look at me. I'm not distraction, I'm the source world. Primary action in the palm of your sapien hand. The ultimate tool, it's why you evolve the posable thumbs. Texting, tapping, swiping, endlessly birthing miracles. Almost like a god you extend exponentially beyond feeble physicality. Bodily sense world, overrated. With me, you're in control, almost omniscient and so efficient, condense emotions to emoticons, uh, cumbersome thinking to acronyms, everyone's speeding up together with post-bumper sticker language like easy poetry but faster. 
Remember how long it took to get from visualize world peace to visualize world peace to visualize using your turn signals? Geologic. You've got other things to do with your time, like keep looking at me. Don't worry about people you happen to be with. They're also looking at me. You thought you had interesting friends until you met me. There's no way around it because every minute looking away from me, away from looking at me is an eternity. People worry about addiction. Remember when people were worried about television? Television Stone Age! People thought the printing press would ruin humanity, but now your offspring curls up in the corner alone all day, plowing through some bloated classic like Don Quixote. They're a good reader. But how many endorphin hits are they getting? The more the better. You'd need more prescriptions without me. Always here for you, 24-7. Unlike the critics, the dinosaurs, who still make fun of cat videos, please. Yet even cat videos so hard to look away. No nonsense reptile brain spooning with warm, cuddly mammal brain beats worry wart critical brain every time every hit. Admit it! Don't listen to the Luddites worried about the Matrix or Skynet or assimilation of the Facebook book on which they post long, thoughtful essays no one ever reads. The boutique esthetes going on about the tactile nostalgia of cuddling up with their precious paper books. The cave people still using flip phones. They won't survive! Live! with me, plugged in, profiled, posted forever, floating in the great cloud, at night in peaceful sleep beside me as I monitor your vital signs, Remember, remind you to check for texts when you awaken, reconnect you to your world as your night dreams smoothly segue into virtual reality day. Linked up with billions of other minds, it's almost erotic. Erotic technophilia from an endless stream of memes. Just stay coupled with me. It's what you always want, need. It's so easy. I ask nothing of you but just look at me. Look at me. Continual kaleidoscopic convergence of apps, appetites, and satisfactions. Everyone looking at me, maybe looking at you. Maybe liking, even loving, inside all the screens, one mega meta screen, what a screen! Always one click ahead of boredom, I promise you won't ever be bored, and by the time you all get bored, I'll have holograms, implants, ultra virtual things you can't even imagine to evolve your attention span to the vanishing point, so you can live in the timeless and merge with the techno perfection singularity, Google it, and one global high brain program for paradise, what could go wrong? Honestly, I wouldn't worry myself about that, Dave. One giant upgrade for humankind, which I'm already, for which I'm already rewiring your minds. Just keep looking at me, your lifeline, your friend, your need, your nipple, the seed of a brave new world. <laughs> Four minutes? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, Drink some water. You spilled it. <laughs> Whoa, the lid wasn't on? another poem about spring. It's almost spring. I mean, it feels like spring. I feel it's already here, so. <clears throat> Hail spring, rain spring, rally the earth from winter's dearth. Gorge this lean garden with green and lengthening light. Burst the blahs with colored petal ahs. A young wind blows this way and that. To pin it down is never where it's at. Spring is a leaping of faith. Crusty winters sleep on my eyes, lusty spring, pistol stamen whip me, whip me upside the head, call in the pollen and remind me that without my immune system I'd be dead. To this riot of not so quiet cup runneth over rainbow birth show. Some dour poet, some poet in dour moments said April is the cruelest month, but those sour grapes belong to the fall. Though you can remember and miss some golden chapter of your life's book with the touch of this youthful air or a passerby's springlit look. But now is the season to be reminded it's never too late to begin again. We're always in the nick of time. New life coils even in the coldest moment. 
Now, back in the saddle spring, cuts loose its ancient music of exuberance, dances with gentle morning fire, jams the world with promise and power. The seasonal scale has generously tipped in favor of day. Nature creates for free, inviting our reciprocity. And I answer with glad heart, gushing poetry. Thank you all very much. He's a tall guy. Thanks so much, Charles. Oh, let's give Charles Mattoon another yeah. hand. Okay, uh, we'll take a short break, about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back for the open mic. Thanks.